Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a good one. So let's dig into some of these topics that I was covering during the Crypto Minute. You've got India and Brazil, they're part of the BRICS nations, and they're expressing major concerns over the expansion of that block. And here's why. They fear that it's going to become something that it was not meant to be. Frankly, I think they're a little naive to think that the, it was never going to become something that they're thinking. The truth is, is that it's a flex for China and Russia to expand their political clout around the world. Just look at what they're doing around the world, how they're investing, and not just how they're investing, but what they do when they get there. Okay, that's what you should be paying attention to. So if you're involved in BRICS, yeah, India, Brazil, yeah, you should be worried. At first, you know, BRICS nations, you know, the BRICS block was supposed to be something for developing countries. It is morphing into something else. It's becoming more of a political block. You have Iran clamoring to get in. Why is that? Oh, Russia? Because you know that's where Russia got its arms. That ought to make you scratch your head. Russia getting its arms from Iran. It's because Russia needs help. From, a, from an economic standpoint, I don't think Russia's doing so hot. And if the rumors are true, China might not be doing all that hot. They've got money already from previous wins, but they might not be doing so hot right now. And that could be a problem. But they're running around the world, both countries running around the world, buying up everything. Buying alliances. And that's the fear that India and Brazil have. Maybe they just chose the wrong team. That's what I'm thinking. I get it. You want to move away from the United States government, you know, the U.S. dollar, blah, 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 blah. I think you fell into from out of the frying pan and into, yeah, that stuff. Now, I wanted to get into WorldCoin. A couple of days ago, I told you about WorldCoin and the whole nine, but let's dig a little bit deeper because Kenya came out and said, yeah, we're going to suspend operations of WorldCoin. And the reason why is because you have to use biometric data to actually you know, get your coin. I want you to, I want you to think about that. So you know how you go to a website and you say, oh, I'm looking for, you know, insurance quotes and I'm going to get like 15 quotes from this rest, from this website, blah, blah, blah. That is a data grab. It is a data grab. And then they take that data and they sell it to companies that want to buy the data. So WorldCoin has already announced that, yes, it will actually share that biometric data with third parties, companies, and governments really so your money is not going to be made from the coin your money is going to be made from the biometric data that you're going to sell um, who wants to do that just who you can't be a smart I don't think you're going to be a smart person if you're going to give up your biometric data they're going to snag a snapshot of your iris. That's you. That's it. That's the last essence of you. So you're going to, frankly, in my opinion, it is a data grab and it, it stinks. It reeks of a dystopian future for me. Whenever I watch all those dystopian kind of things, you know, you're walking over to a machine, you're going like this so he can see who you are. And then it lets you win to wherever it is you wanted to go. That's too much. That's too much for me. So, yeah, I snub my nose at WorldCoin. You know, I look at OpenAI and, you know, I use I use AI and I look at WorldCoin. I don't use that, but I'm seeing, you know, a thread. And the thread is, is that, yeah, it's going to it's going to rock the markets. It's going to shock the world. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. But it's about control. It really is about control. And I have a deep problem with that. Now, so you've got, you know, the downgrade of Fitch ratings, or down, Fitch ratings downgraded the United States to triple A plus, I mean, double A plus from triple A. I get it. I get it. I really do get it. Over the past 20 years, the United States has not done well. Totally get that. But the timing, I told you before, bothers me. Warren Buffett's response to Fitch ratings, and mind you, Moody's did this a long time ago. But the time, but but 
I think that's what it is. Moody's did this a long time ago. And Fitch did it just now. Am I am I against, you know, the 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 math that went into the decision? No, not at all. The United States has not been managing well. Both parties have screwed up and, you know, the United States needs to rethink how we do things. I think maybe we get rid of all the old folks in in the government and we start, you know, educating our public better, right? Because everybody thinks that, oh, it's the president's fault. It's the president's fault. The president is there for four years if he's lucky, if he or she are lucky. That's right. I said it. I said it just like that. If he or she are lucky. Now, if you look at that, you say to yourself, well, then who's the cause? Well, how do you go from being, you know, earning $100,000, $150,000 to being a multimillionaire when you're sitting in Congress? And I'll just leave it at that. Feel me? You've got a whole industry around following the investments of Congress. Yeah. A whole industry around it. Different services will send you emails about who bought what and why it's important because they sit on this committee. And you wonder why over the past 20 years things have not been going well. It's because they're more greedy than they ever have been. They've always been greedy. But it's so blatant now. It's so out there now. It's so ridiculous. How did Lauren Blobert, sorry, Bobert, that really was a mistake. Um, how did Lauren Bobert go from being, you know, dang near broke to being a millionaire? How does that happen? You don't really have to ask. Just go look. It's not hard. It's not difficult. So I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it all. I'm just going, yeah. Now, on top of that, there are people saying, listen, you know what? Totally agree with, you know, the, the ratings change. That's fine. Whatever. It's second best. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Who else's did you change? Canada, England, Spain. Just Who else have you changed? At, at the time that you changed the United States, which arguably could be the best economy in the world right now, which it's still not a great economy, but it could be it could still be the best. Or at least you could put it in the top what? 3? How? How? Okay? So that's why I'm thinking yeah, the, the the timing just reeks. The timing of it all just reeks. And then we're looking at poor little Qcoin. They were forced to implement a know your customer or KYC security piece into their into their system because they knew that you know things were not going to go well well that was the whole backbone of their revenue right meaning you could come here you could do whatever you want nobody knew anything blah 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 yeah mm, that went out the window so now they had to implement the kyc rules and restrictions money has not been good ever since they're probably experiencing some pro troubles be before then and there are rumors that they're going to lay off 30 percent of their staff Glad I never used Qcoin. I played with it because I wanted to test it. I wanted to see how, you know, was it better than? It's sort of like, you know, I own a technology company. You know, we're predominantly on Microsoft Azure, but we will dive into, you know, Google's, you know, Google systems. We will dive into Amazon AWS and, you know, we will still compare so that we know that we're still on the right track. So I was comparing Qcoin to Trust Wallet to other wallets to MetaMask and all these other wallets, and I was just like, yeah, no, nah, there's no reason for me to to leave my top six, seven wallets. <laughs> yeah, I have that many. I probably have more. Um, I was just like, yeah, no, there's no reason to fit them into the mix. So yeah, I'm not I'm not shocked. And then I'll end with Elizabeth Warren and Warren Buffett um, just going after the little guy. Let's go after crypto tax evaders. Okay, what about what about the big major corporations that are getting huge, 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 you know, savings from municipalities, governments around the country? Rich and wealthy getting all kinds of uh, of write offs and loopholes that you know the ordinary person can't can't take control of. The one thing that's meant for the little person, and they want to beat them up about it. It's not that much money that you're losing in those taxes. 
Anyway, you know what we should do? We should look at the numbers. And it's a big, bright red. <laughs> I know, it's not funny. It's not funny. I'm sorry. It's not funny. Um, but it is funny to me. And the reason why is because I'm, I, you know, I, I speak with people and I hear people panicking. It's, oh, it's, listen, you know, shh. You know, we were in the teens not that long ago. <laughs> I'm just saying, we we're in the teens and people are freaking out because we're not at 30,000. I'm not freaking out. I'm trying to figure out how to get even more money so I can go and use dollar cost averaging and some additional dry powder to get more. That's what I'm doing. That's literally what I'm doing. So as I look at these, you know, organizations that are building, you know, foundation and, you know, growing in adoption, trust me, I am not freaking out about this, about what is going to eventually become a blip on the radar. I'm not worried about it at all. Just not. Just not. You know, I I had to transfer some money, right? And because my mother called up, she didn't bring a lot of cash on her trip. She was like, oh, can you send me some money? I'm down with that. Especially if you're gonna bring me back something special like some booze, because she's on that, she's on that kind of tour. And I and I'm just like, yeah, not a problem. I, you know, I actually had to stop and think about how I'm gonna send her the money. <laughs> I was like, because I mom has her own crypto wallet. And I was like, oh, I'll just send her some crypto and she can cash out. And I was like, yeah, you know, dang. So I wound up sending, I wound up sending, you know, cash. Um, but in, but in that time I took from one of my wallets and I, I, I literally just wanted to see how long it would take. So I moved some Bitcoin, I moved some Matic. Bitcoin, I could have paid extra and made it move faster, but it took about 20 minutes. I moved some Matic and it was fast. Let's just say it was go to the store and buy something fast, right? Bitcoin was a little bit longer. So I'm realizing that for Bitcoin, I'm probably going to use that for the larger transactions. But for smaller transactions, manageable transactions, everyday transactions, I use that moment to actually look at it because I've been testing for a minute. Matic is fast. Matic is fast. Now, I only I was only able to do that because I have a wallet that I play with. Right? I have I have, you know, money in there that I play with. So, you know, Bitcoin, you know, for testing. So Bitcoin, Matic, um, some Doge, some SHIB. I do not have XRP to spare to play with. Guess what? It's gonna stay like that for a while. <laughs> And the reason why is because I just think, you know, Ripple is mad fast, but I think it's got a lot of growth and I've just been trying to grow that bag. Other bags I've got growth, I you know, I still put in, but I've got growth, but, you know, XRP is something that I'm focused on. So there's that. When I look at, when you look at the numbers, you know, wow, there's still a lot in the green. Solana is still in the green. They had an outage not too long ago, what, a few days ago, a week ago, that, Still, year to date, 127 percent, 127 plus. That's nuts. That's nuts. But you know, everybody's you know, nothing's actually moving. Uniswap is up 1.16 percent. Big deal. Um, I told you, I have the five percent rule. If, if if you're not moving five percent in either direction, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't care. Um, when you look at the, when you look at this again, we're trading within a range. We really are trading within a range. It's it's just lateral movement. So I'm not freaking out. Just not. I, I just don't see the reason to freak out, right? The fear and greed index. Yeah, people are not freaking out. They're kind of neutral, high neutral, as a matter of fact, at 52. So yeah, I'm not going to freak out. Now, again, so something to pay attention to is England at 7 a, at 7 a.m., probably after, after the time, because I'm not going to keep talking for an additional four minutes just to catch it um because it's 656 right now um in four minutes they're going to make their announcement about their rate hike move everybody's expecting 25 basis points i think that's already baked in anything else would be surprising right 50 basis point move chances are there they could do that but i think they're going to follow the united states with 25. anyway that's it for today 
If you have any questions, have anything positive to say, anything negative to say, let me know. I can make some changes. I know that I suffered with uh, recording before, sound was off, video was off a little bit, my computer was doing some additional work for me at the same time that I was recording. So I apologize for that. Anyway, it's Eddie J on crypto. I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.